Hi, my name is Biomi and I will show you how to create an SQL data source in the IFS Lobby Data Source Designer. IFS Lobby is a summarized visual representation of information that is important to a specific individual, business role, process or business area. A data source is where we specify which information is needed and where to retrieve it from. A data source is used by an element to retrieve filtered structured data. The data source obtains this data from a view in the database. Data sources are created in the data source designer and then saved in the database. On the right side of the data source designer, we have the data source browser. The data sources saved in the database are listed here. On the left, we have the properties pane. When we select a data source from the data source browser, its properties are shown in the properties pane. In the center, we have the preview pane. This is where we test out data sources by executing it and retrieving a sample of the specified data. Underneath the preview pane, we have the used in pane, which lists all the elements that are using this data source. Let's open IFS applications. We are now in the lobby page overview. At the bottom right, we have a button to open the data source designer. This is the data source designer. Let's create a new SQL data source. First, we click on the new button in the page toolbar. This opens the data source picker. Here we select the data source type we want to create. I will select SQL and press OK. We then get an empty record in the properties pane. The properties area has three collapsible sections. Definition, Columns, Information. In the definition section, we give a name for our data source. Then we give a view. An SQL data source is based on a view in the database. In other words, the data for the SQL data source is derived from the view that is given in this field. In the data source browser, the view used by each data source is listed under each entry. Let's create this SQL data source based on the view customer order lines. Next, we give a condition to filter out the data. If we don't give a condition, this data source will derive all the granted data from the view. Let's say we want the custom orders that are in the release state. We set the condition as state equals released. You will need to know some amount of SQL and have an understanding of the available views and APIs to create an SQL data source. Next, we have fields to add group by and order by conditions. For this data source, I am going to skip these two. In the columns section, we add the columns we want in our data source. Let's say we want the custom order number. Pressing the add button creates a new row. In this column, we give the column name defined in the view. In the next column, we give a name. This name is what will be listed in the element designer as an available column of the data source. Next, we set the data type. Clicking the choose column button will open the column picker which lists all the columns in the above view. This view has a lot of columns. So I will use the filter to find the columns. First, I want to add customer. Add. Next state. Clear the filter. State. Add. I also want the supplier. Clear. Add. Finally, the quantity that is due. 
add. Let's close the dialog. The column field is filled with the column names from the view. The name is filled with the prompt text. And the type is filled with the data type set in the view. We can always change the name and data type. I will change this to quantity and set the type to number. In addition to the columns in the view, we can add method calls. Let's add a method call to get the customer name. Add a new row, ampersand, app owner, dot, API name, dot, method name, parameters. I will call this field name and keep the type as text. We can change the order of columns by selecting the row and pressing up or down. We can delete a column by pressing on the cross next to it. Let's save this data source. The data source is saved in the database. As I mentioned before, the data sources saved in the database are listed in the data source browser. We can search for a data source by typing its name here. When we select a data source from the data source browser, its properties are shown in the properties pane. I am going to select this data source which I have created some time back. In the preview pane, we can execute this data source to check if it returns the intended data. When we press preview, a sample of the resulting data is shown. In the used in pane, we get a list of elements where the data source has been used. If you decide to modify the data source, this pane comes in handy to identify which elements would be affected by the change. The last section of the properties pane is called information. First, there is the author field where we specify who created the data source. When we save the data source for the first time, if there is no value in this field, the application will automatically save it with the ID of the user logged into the machine. This can always be changed. I am going to set it to IFSRND. The description field is used to give a short description about the data source for future reference. This description is visible under each data source in the data source browser. The keywords are used to aid search in the data source browser. For example, if I give the keyword summary, save the data source and search for summary, this data source is filtered. Data sources can be filtered by all four fields, name, author, description and keywords by using the search box in the data source browser. Before we create a new data source, we might want to see if there are other data sources using the same view as a source. By prefixing the filter with src colon, we can filter out data sources that use a particular view. As I mentioned before, you need to know some amount of SQL and have an understanding of the available views and APIs to create an SQL data source. However, to create a simple data source, you can get assistance from the information available on the application page. Let's take an example. We are in an application page. From the Context Menu System Information tab, we can find out which view is used by this page. If you do not see this tab, RMB on the Context Menu and add the System Information tab using the Customization dialog. Let's open the Search dialog and enter a search criteria. Go to Advanced section, SQL tab. Here we can find the SQL criteria that needs to be included in the condition field of our data source. As you can see, 
creating an SQL data source is quite straightforward. In the next video, I will show you how to create a count element in the IFS Lobby Element Designer and use this SQL data source to visualize data. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching.